In our morning rounds, we look ahead to medical advances in the new year. The top health stories in 2015 include rising drug prices, the first genetically modified salmon, the first sex drug for women, and processed meat declared a cause of cancer. Our Dr. David Agus is in Los Angeles, ready to make some predictions for 2016. David, good morning. Good morning, Anthony. First up, we're looking at wearable devices here, and you're not talking about Fitbit. So what are we, what's the next wave? Well, we hit the low-lying fruit with wearable devices now, right? They look at how much you move. They look at uh, 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 many of those kind of aspects. But now, the new generation of devices are going to go much deeper, give us deep information. So we heard just last week that uh, sudden heart attacks aren't so sudden. They're actually warnings. Well, new devices are going to pick up those warnings. You know, Steve Jobs always lamented that they would prick his finger to measure his sugar all the time when he underwent his liver transplant. Where now we're gonna to start to be able to measure things like glucose mm -hmm. and insulin through the skin. So those next generations of wearable are coming and will integrate to your doctor's visit. That's really incredible. I mean, that's life changing for countless patients. We wanna ask you about editing DNA. We talked about a breakthrough technology called CRISPR throughout the year. How do you think all of this will be used in terms of editing genes in the future? Well, it's very exciting. Last week, Science Magazine announced their molecule of the year, which I'm sure you guys were waiting on bated breath for, and it was <laughs> CRISPR. So this is a molecule that can change one of the three billion letters of DNA. Mm. And so it allows us to potentially make a designer uh, plants, designer animals, correct diseases. It can allow us potentially to, or now they're actually making mosquitoes that are resistant to malaria. So it would be a major change in our ability to transform genes. Does that mean designer babies as well, David? Well, in China, they did that. So in China this year, they changed an embryo. And it's scary. For years, we debated it, but we couldn't do it. Now we can do it. And so obviously, we need regulations. An international commission met several weeks ago, but it's not clear who's going to regulate it. It's a powerful area, and we need to have structure for going forward so we don't uh, prevent progress, but also we put restraints. Well, the next advance you speak about are elephants finding a cure for cancer. What's this about? This is so cool. Is that <laughs> elephants are 80 times bigger than you or I, and yet they rarely get cancer. And so it was discovered just several months ago that elephants have 20 copies of a gene called P53, which is the guardian of the genome, and it corrects errors, and we have one. Wow. And so elephants have a childbirth until their 70s, and so and the males protect the herd until that age. And so we don't need to do that. Obviously, in our 30s, we stop having children, and we stop contributing historically to society. Now, obviously, we do much later. But elephants designed a way not to get cancer so that they contribute uh, uh, until their 70s or 80s. And we have to replicate that. So all of a sudden, we have a clue to prevent cancer. And so now we can pay attention to it and try to figure out ways to replicate it to benefit all of us. Amazing things to look forward to. Dr. David Agus, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Going to be a very Thank interesting you. year in, in medicine and science.